We're back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're set for our first major conversation uh, on medical tourism. Of course, it's a very, very important aspect uh, of uh, the conversation about the health system in Nigeria. Nigeria, we're told, currently has only 24,000 licensed medical doctors available in the country, uh, less than 10% of the number needed to meet the WHO recommendations. According to uh, the president, Nigerian Medical Association, Uche Roland, uh, a large number of uh, Nigerian doctors emigrated to seek greener pastures in developed countries, noting that um, he said that 5,600 of them, excuse me, have emigrated to the United Kingdom in the last eight years. 5,600, that's a lot. Now, he also said that uh, Nigeria requires a mix of 23 doctors, nurses, and midwives per 10,000 population to deliver essential health services according uh, this, to the World Health Organization standards. Now, he also uh, went on to lament that only one doctor is available to treat 30,000 patients in some southern states, while in the northern part of Nigeria, it's one doctor to 45,000 patients. Now, given the fact that there are only 24,000 doctors available uh, in the country, the current doctor-patient ratio in Nigeria is put at 1 to 9,083. 1 to 9,083, which is a stark contrast with uh, the WHO's requirement of one doctor to 600 patients, minimum. Now, with 218 million people to cater to, Nigeria requires at least uh, uh, 363,000 additional doctors to meet this target, that's a calculation, 363,000. Well, in the same vein, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayomi, uh, is calling for a strategic plan to reverse medical tourism and brain drain in the country, saying deliberate attempts must be taken to complete uh, the cycle, brain gain of medical professionals uh, in the diaspora. Now, available statistics show that Nigeria is spending uh, approximately $1.5 billion on medical tourism every year. Meanwhile, 10,000 Nigerian medical professionals have migrated to the UK, while 4,000 uh, medical doctors are in the United States. How does Nigeria stem the tide in medical brain drain in the country and also in medical tourism in the country? This morning, joining us to discuss this is a public affairs analyst. Uh, he's in Ottawa, Canada. Abraham Great, good morning to you. Good morning to you. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. All right. I'm wondering whether you're one of those um, who have jackpot, you know, on the medical plane. Well, it's, um, it's a bit funny because I've been out of Nigeria for most of my life. Been out of Nigeria for over 26 years. I've, I've left Nigeria since I was a teenager. So in my case, it was not really the um, the Japa syndrome per se, uh, but Providence. So you know, I left Nigeria as a missionary uh, since my teenage. So I and yeah, I've lived here for most of my life uh, than I have lived in Nigeria. Uh, yeah, I lived abroad. I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm sure people may be able to guess, but since you are in Canada, which is one of the countries uh, taking in Nigerian professionals. What do you think, would you say, is the attraction, the allure uh, for people who, professionals in the medical sector, uh, leaving the country to go seek greener pastures in Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, we can even add Saudi Arabia, uh, Dubai, and others to that list? Well, the obvious um, uh, reason, the, the most obvious reason is um, the standard of living. As every human being, you know, according to Mount's law hierarchy of need, would uh, has at least a physiological need, which which is the need to breathe a better uh, air, to have food, to have water, and some of these basic amenities are actually missing or lacking in the Nigerian environment. So either it is the doctor, the nurses, the teachers, uh, the musicians, the whatever you call the. Uh, the, the sector of people, normally people will want to find a way to a better life. 
And then there is also massive unemployment in the country, which will make people to, to always look for greener pasture uh, anywhere else. But I will, I mean, among many other things, I will add to it that um, the, the, the security of people, which is according to Manslow, that's the second basic need. People don't feel safe in Nigeria at the moment, and it doesn't matter what the career is. People try to find a better place to uh, pitch their tent or to at least improve their mortality rate. Interesting, interesting. Um, so, so we have two issues, medical tourism and uh, uh, the brain drain. We're hearing that the Lagos State Commissioner of Health is asking for deliberate attempts or, or measures to uh, uh, you know, to address this. I mean, it's, it's quite a bad situation. You know, we, we have only 24,000 uh, doctors in Nigeria, according to the, uh, the, the head of president of the Nigerian Medical Association. When you hear that, how does that make you feel? What goes through your mind? When you hear the country's biggest, Nigeria has only 24,000 doctors. I mean, uh, thank you for the statistics that you read out uh, earlier. I was going to say to you that Nigeria needs over 360,000 uh, you know, medical doctors in the country, uh, but we are we're not even up to 10% of that uh, in the country at the minute. And that is quite, you know, is quite disturbing. And the country, not just the Lagos state government, the country as a whole needs to come together and find what to do with that. Now, usually what we get in Nigeria is that the leadership or the federal government always have a, like a knee-jerk reaction to things they try to ban people from traveling. At the moment, they're trying to hurt, um, a, you know, passport booklets so that young people cannot travel and stuff like that. Those are not the measures that actually adequately address the issue of brain drain uh, in the country. There are so many other measures that needs to be uh, put in place that ensures that people's life are valued. Now, number one, people do not, the, the life of an average Nigerian does not really matter much. And you will see that in how many people died on, on, on the streets, maybe on the expressway, how many people lose their life for malnutrition, uh, mal uh, mal you know, nutrition. They, people don't have a basic, uh, you know, standard of living that they need. So if we do not address issues from those end, every other measures that we try to put in place is going to be just like a futile um, effort. The other thing is that we don't have adequate data. The data that we have at the moment seems to be coming from embassies, from other countries. You know, Nigeria don't seem to really have how many, what is the data of the number of doctors that we train per year? Because then you will be able to see how many doctors, how many people who have actually been in school to study medicine, to study nursing, are in Nigeria who have not traveled abroad, but they've not been able to get a job. The other thing is that how many place, working environment for these doctors, how many hospitals, standard hospitals do we really have for these people to find the expression to practice, you know, their trade? Hmm. Uh, some people say, I mean, uh, from your experience, let me, since you're out there, have you come across Nigerian medical professionals, doctors, have you been treated by any of them? How do they fare when they travel abroad, you know, to new environments with uh, new rules, new equipment? Yeah, they were trained in our system here. How do they fare in these countries? Canada is a case study. You know, one thing that is commendable about Nigeria is that we have good ed education system, but we have a very bad uh, education resources. So what you get, first of all, with Nigerians is that when Nigerians travel abroad, they are very good theoretically. They, you know, most of Nigerian doctors would immigrate. Uh, from Nigeria to the UK, uh, where I live for over 22 years, and I still live even though I, I now live in Canada. You know, what you will get is that Nigerians are very sound. They can talk to people, they can advise people. But when it comes to the practicality of handling, you know, uh, you know, medical equipment and stuff like that, Nigeria was, Nigerians lack a lot behind. So what happens is that those countries will say, okay, you know, come in and then you do like adaptations and, and stuff like that. So we are very well, you know, trained people in terms of theory, but we're not so practical. So that's the first thing. People are excited. Doctors, nurses, they're excited when they get into, uh, you know, European countries or into Canada like this. And when you actually find them properly trained, you realize that 
almost everyone from every part of the world want to see that a Jewish doctor, an Indian doctor, or a Nigerian doctor. These are the top three people that most patients will want to, to, to treat them because a Nigerian doctor will actually very well diagnose what you're going through uh, most, you know, uh, uh, most of the time, they will be the one that people prefer to go to in, in a community. So Nigerian doctors, in their own way, they are faring very well. Look, for example, the average salary of a Nigerian doctor in Nigeria is 250,000 naira. Some of them will push it even up to maybe 500,000 naira in uh, uh, per month. Whereas, you know, in the U.S., for example, in Canada, the average salary of a doctor will be about sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. Now you do the math and see how much the difference is. So when these people move into this part of the world and they realize that as a doctor you can only practice for like six months to one year, you have some incentive to begin to live in like a mansion, five six bedroom house. Immediately you get a job after like maybe the first two or three pay sleep. You can go out there and get a Range Rover or a Mercedes Benz, you know, on loan to drive. You have you can put your children in, in a quality school. Who would not want to be in this kind of country? So Nigerian doctors, these things are very attractive to them. All right. Um, um, I mean, do you think it's fair? Let's talk about fair, fair play now. Nigeria trained these doctors. Uh, of course, there will be some sort of a subsidy from government as far as tertiary education is concerned. So they pay less, you know, to, to get trained in Nigeria than you know you would pay in the UK, where I live for 22 years. And I'm happy to hear that because it gives us some more to talk about. They would pay less to be trained as doctors in Nigeria than you would pay in Canada to get trained. Some of these doctors are trained and get government subsidies in terms of even accommodation, you know. Government takes them on, on, on some other trainings during the housemanship and all that. Um, are these countries like UK, Canada, United States of America, Saudi Arabia and co, are they being fair uh, to come to Nigeria, poach doctors or to welcome Nigerian doctors who they spent or whom they spent not a single penny to train, leaving Nigeria who maybe spent a little money you know, in terms of subsidy and environment to train these doctors empty? Well, we first of all, we have to correct a notion um, that Nigerians, there are many countries, including Russia, who give free education to people in the medical industry. Norway, Sweden, uh, Ukraine uh, are very big on that. Uh, you know, Ukraine is going through a lot at the minute. But you find that most of Nigerian doctors uh, who actually apply, uh, you know, who trade abroad, are actually trained in the Ukraine, in Russia, in the Caribbeans. A lot of them, they might carry Nigerian passport, but their parents actually went through the pain of sending them abroad to train them. Well, there are minor minority, particular nurses, who were trained in Nigeria, but they have just given you the salary parity right now. When you live in Nigeria and you're a nurse, and you're earning 120, 150,000 uh, naira, which is not even up to $300. But you see your mates are living abroad and they're earning $10,000 minimum a, a year. You would think of how much people in your family you can take care of. Yeah, but, but Abraham, so, I'm, I'm talking about fair play now, fairness. You know, whether so, so, he, he, he didn't spend, I'm talking about the Nigerian trained doctors, he, he spent not a dime to train them, but you're taking them. And the country that uh, spent some little, no matter how small, and provided them the education that they have it has nothing no compensation nothing so the 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 opposite of brain drain is called brain gain and brain great gain is just a nation sitting down to realize we have lack of these kind of skills we lack musicians or we lack uh, uh, medical doctors. Uh, the UK, for example, at the moment, realized that they, 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 they are projected in the next 50 years, and they realized that they lack a lot of ta talent. So they created a, poli a, a visa policy called the Global Talent Visa, meaning that our comedians, our musicians, that we're not paying attention to now, we're looking at the medical doctors, but as, a, as an immigration consultant, I've had a lot of people to get Global Talent Visa, not just from Nigeria, from every part of the world. So they want to see your record, that you've gotten awards, you've gotten uh, great talent, 
And they want those kind of people to be living in their country, to make their country great. We don't have that in our country. We cannot complain. Nigeria cannot complain of brain gain when Nigeria has no value for its own human capital. I hope you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about here. This country, Saudi Arabia, the UK, France, Canada, the US, they've realized that in the next 15 years, we're going to have shortage of this you know, career uh, people. Let's open up a, you know, uh, a visa policy. Let's open up a policy to welcome people from around the world. Nigeria has one of the worst immigration policy in the world. What stops Nigeria from attracting Ghanaian doctors? Now, Ghana is going through a lot also right now. What stops Nigeria from attracting doctors from, uh, from Benin Republic, from Cameroon, from uh, Kenya, from... We are not innovative. The, the, the way to look at life is not by blaming other people, but introspect and see how but, can we but, make but, our own but, but environment but as, uh, a better place for people Abraham, to thrive. As, as, and I'm happy you said you're a missionary, so you know the value of, of service. As a medical doctor, you swear the Hippocratic Oath. I'm not saying it's, a, it's not a vow of poverty like the Catholic priests take, you know, or celibacy. No, it's not that. But still, there is an element of service in medical professions, an element of sacrifice in the medical profession. You say, even though I'm here to be paid, if anybody comes to me who is not well, my first instinct will be to do what I can to help them rather than to think of my pocket. Um, there are some doctors who are remaining in the country because they're saying Nigerians need them. Nigerians need them. Shouldn't there be an element of sacrifice on the part of doctors to say, we will remain in the country to build Nigeria as our contribution to the nation because of the profession we are in, which does not put money first. Um, I, I like to say this, um, you know, I, although I've left Nigeria since 1997, I travel back to Nigeria an average of three to four times every year. This year alone, I've been in Nigeria like four times. I had a doctor in, in Abuja um, uh, who was so patriotic of Nigeria, extremely patriotic. You know, he travels abroad, he goes on holiday and stuff like that. And I say, you are the one, he's a pastor. You see, he said, he said, my friend died. On uh, uh, in the hands of uh, 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 kidnappers, the friend is, was a doctor was kidnapped on uh, Abuja to Kano Road or something like that, and he eventually actually lost his life. When people are not secure, when people's life are not safe, human beings will find a place where they can survive. Nigeria is suffering. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very big proponent that Nigeria does not have a a, a japa. A problem when, or at least well, when it comes to special skill, like in, in the medical sector, I do believe that we have this um, brain drain. But if care is not taken, uh, the situation is even going to get worse because there is no value for life. And what these people are doing, yes, many patriotic Nigerians are there, but their lives are not safe. So apart from the earning capacity. People are just leaving the country because of the fact that their life is not safe. i give you an example. There is a young lady who died in the train attack. You remember there was a lady, I think she was trained abroad. She's patriotic of Nigeria. She went back there to serve and do all she, she can do to serve her country. But she was, she was killed in the train attack. So look at things like that and tell me, really, even if you there, that you are in a TV station, you're a very great, you know, handsome looking young man. I'm sure if the opportunity presents itself for you to be told by a country that you can be on CNN or you can be on one TV station somewhere in the US, in Canada, or in France, I'm sure that even if you don't take it, you will be lured by it. Hmm. But I'm, I'm not a doctor. I didn't swear, no hypocritical oath, you know. But I mean, you, you made some fantastic points there. Uh, um, uh, and yes, I, I'll think about it. So, I mean, CNN, if you're watching, hey. <laughs> um, but but what, what, what's, what, what have you noticed, observed as, um, now talking about medical tourism, which is related to the general standard of uh, medical uh, facilities and the standard of the system, medical system in the country. Um, we're seeing Nigerians going to 
India to China to the UK, a president goes there to get treated, treatment, you know, the US and all that. W what have you noticed in the UK health system that we can borrow from to make us better here in, in Nigeria? And also, what have you noticed from the Canadian health system that we can borrow uh, to help ourselves here in Nigeria? Um, maybe if you want to talk about the American system, we know about that. Because what I hear is that while in the UK you have the N NHS, but you can still get private uh, service if you want, pri private medical attention, if you want treatment, if you want to. Uh, here in Canada, it's, you can only do the government one. And that may be a problem for healthcare. If you really want fast healthcare, Canada is not a place to stay. So what have you observed about these two systems? And what can Nigeria borrow from that to stem medical tourism? That's a very interesting question because I myself have only uh, migrated to Canada just about three months now. And in, the, in that three months, I think I've gone back to the UK like four times. Uh, one of the reasons is that I still kept my doctors in the UK and I've still not understood. Uh, I'm finding it difficult to understand the Canadian uh, health um, system. So I've lived in the UK 22 years. And whilst I was complaining in the UK that the medical system was getting uh, worse under the current you know, conservative government, it's not the way it is under Labour Party, for example. So Labour you know, started the NHS, and NHS is always like their baby. But the way the conserv conservative have gone about it you know, is become a lot political because uh, the, the conservative want to privatise it. So this is the way it works. And... As an average UK citizen, not even citizen, that you have residence, even ordinary student visa, uh, you know, you are entitled to see a doctor near your street. There must be, we call them the general practitioner, the GP. You must, it's almost like a crime. Once you are in the country, you should register with one so that you can have your health, you know, checked regularly. You don't pay a dime. You know, apart from people coming into the country as immigrants who now has what they call the immigration health, health surcharge, which is a fee you pay ahead, and that's it. It doesn't matter how many times you're sick, you'll be treated uh, free. In the UK, uh, even though I have a private doctor, it, that is because of my privilege of also pastoring, and I have a few people who, like my assistant pastor is a medical doctor, my friend is a medical doctor. I have almost five private doctors. One of them have his own private, uh, private practice. So if I don't really need them, unless because of time, maybe I just want to quickly see somebody, somebody because it's free. In Canada, it's also free. But you've got to understand what the system is. You know, you've got to be a permanent resident. You've got to uh, or be a citizen. And like I said to you, I still don't understand how their system works here. I'm used to the UK, uh, to, to the UK system, which is actually at the moment also getting worse. That's why the UK is bringing in a lot more doctors, a lot more nurses, because it's now increasingly getting uh, so difficult for you to be able to see your uh, uh, free doctors. But if there's one thing that the UK has got right, is the fact that the standard of those hospitals are actually very fantastic. You know, the standard of the, sometimes you go to the hospital, you feel like maybe you should just stay there. It's like a home, you know, for you to be properly treated. So, and these are part of the things that is lacking in Nigeria. We don't have enough standard hospital where, a, you know, the citizens can go in and feel safe. Now, this is a bit emotional for me. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you a short story about Nigeria. You know, growing up in Nigeria, I used to be very sickly. And actually, Nigeria used to have some very fantastic hospital. So I'll give you an example. I had meningitis, and I, I'm sure you know how terrible meningitis was. In 1990, at the age of 12, or going to 13, my life was saved in Ikeja General Hospital. But how? I had a doctor, Dr. Kuku, of, uh, the, the, he, he himself and his wife owns a co-hospital. They were treating me and referred me to the general hospital. My life was saved in Ikeja General Hospital because they were able to induce me into coma for several, um, for several months. And eventually, yeah, there are spiritual intervention and stuff like that. But I'm always grateful to God. I'm grateful to Nigeria. I'm grateful to Dr. Kuku. I'm grateful to Ikeja General Hospital. I'm grateful to Eko Hospital. But I'm also grateful to the old NITEL, 
Because at that time, NITA took care of, I think, about 90% of the medical bills of their staff. My father was a NITA staff. So, but I recall because from childhood, I used to be so sickly. You know, even though I'm AA, I'm OO and all that, but I used to be so sickly. But I remember that we used to be able to go to fantastic hospital. Even in my street, in my house, in Mushi, we had a Columbia hospital, which my father was part of facilitating coming to, into the country. But today, it's very difficult to come about such, you know, hospital. All right. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Great. It's been a, a thrill talking to you. Um, uh, and, of course, we look forward to having you again uh, on the program. We have, we have a lot to do and a lot to learn from what's happening around the country to stand the tide of brain drain and, indeed, uh, medical tourism to turn brain drain into our own brain gain instead. Uh, Abraham, great uh, joining us from Ottawa in Canada. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Now we'll talk about uh, uh, the independent petroleum marketers of Nigeria charging the federal government to take possession of stolen crude oil um, in the country. We'll be right back. Stay with us.